Hi Libra, welcome to your April 2020 General Tarot reading. It's Raina here. All right, just shuffling the cards. I'm gonna just do it from the back. Um, <laughs> I do it differently depending on which sign. Sometimes I lay the cards out and pick from there, but right now, just easier this way. Okay, two cards came when I did for the outcome card, so I'm going to use both of them. Okay. So in April, I just want to tell you astrologically that you have a uh, full moon in your sign. So that's um, on April 7th at 18 degrees of Libra. And so that can be... Um, something that you're leaving behind that um, relates to the way that you conduct yourself, uh, a, a facet of you, maybe even a physical thing because the first house can be your body. So just want to let you know about that. If you want to find out more uh, details about the astrological transits for April, I already have a, um, a video up, so check my channel out if you're not subscribed. And subscribe if you like the material. So the heart of the matter is the Temperance card, and uh, this is a card of balance between the spiritual and the material, one foot in the water and one foot on land. And this, this is a card connected to Sagittarius. So a person in your life that is a Sag who is playing an important role doesn't have to be a significant other could be a child it could you know it could be a parent it doesn't matter but um, I think the theme of this card is about not forgetting that we are um, both physical beings and spiritual beings and you know it's funny because People would uh, normally, I was even going to say that, that saying, uh, spiritual beings having a um, human experience. But actually, we're also human beings. Um, and we're living here, and so we can't forget that aspect of it. And I think the spiritual community sometimes tries to de-emphasize the, the material as if we have to pick and choose, and we don't. I mean, we, uh, and I, you know, didn't come up with this brilliant observation myself. I, I believe it was um, Abraham Hicks who was talking about this, but uh, probably not the only one. The point is, is that people who meditate in ca caves for years on end, I think a lot of them even eventually come out. That might be important to get away from the world for uh, a certain amount of time but we're here for a reason and I think too many spiritual beliefs center around this idea that this is like punishment or we're just really ignorant about spirituality so that's kind of a form of punishment I guess instead of looking at as looking at it as another adventure in form that that is right on time, that is, is happening for a reason and has nothing to do with punishment. So it's very interesting because I've kind of evolved in my own views. And so, you know, I realize other people may think differently about it, but that's how I see the temperance card is making sure that both sides are taken care of. And if there is something going on specifically with you, connected to either one of those um, sides of life that you may realize that balance is needed. And it's interesting because you are the sign of the scales. So balance is so important for you. And actually in the um, past, oh yeah, there's the scales. The past position, the six of pentacles is about getting what you are worth or um, an equal exchange of energy. So if... Um, there is this situation in the workplace about um, pay. 
and you feel that you're, you know, doing a great job and you're working, you know, a certain amount of hours and you deserve more money and you're not getting it, really believing that you deserve it. And it's interesting because in some cases, especially people who consider themselves spiritual, they will tend to downplay the material resources angle because they think it's crass, it's ignorant, it's you know, you know, just wrong to do. And yet, um, it's something that I think is symbolic of other um, areas. So it's like, if a person doesn't feel like they're deserving of getting what they do deserve materially, then that can show up in, you know, multiple areas of life. And the only person who's going to really advocate for you is you. And uh, so that could be what is um, kind of at play here. And it can even be in personal relationships that this takes place. How much do you give of yourself? And how much does your partner give? So rather than, you know, some people think in terms of material, um, like how much somebody spends on the other person. Now that I think is crass because I don't think that's what we're talking about. It goes far deeper than that. It's about um, how much you actually um, give of yourself and how much do they give. And if they are kind of like don't seem as invested in the relationship and there's an, another word that kind of connects to money too, investment but investing one's energy in a relationship, then that suggests that it's kind of a one-way street. And that is something to definitely look into. Don't kind of explain it away, you know, rationalize it. Um, really, you know, consider, is this true or not? The higher message is the emperor. And the emperor can be like the father. So even if it's a boss and you're dealing with it, it could even be like reliving something when you were growing up where the father or, you know, whoever this authority figure is kind of like ruled the roost, was um, everything revolved around this person and everybody's personal needs kind of were put on the back burner because this person had to come first. And so that may be like repeating itself in a current job situation where you have a boss like that. Or it can even be just projection where you see everybody who's in a position of authority as being your father all over again or that authority figure all over again. And it's almost like you... Um, relinquish your your sense of autonomy or um, personal uh, freedom. No, there's another word like your your power. You relinqu relinquish your power to this um, individual that has nothing to do with determining your future um, simply because it's like you become a little boy or girl again. And so that's one possibility. The other thing, too, is uh, even in personal relationships, this can happen for the same reason, or that you, for some reason, you're attracting very rigid, controlling personalities. And sometimes, you know, um, a form of control is with holding affection, kind of like keeping the other person um, at bay by, or, you know, keep them, you know, trying to get the person's approval by kind of withholding their affection. So rather than getting caught up in that kind of dynamic, um, it's, I think it's a good idea to like see, to always observe as you go along, how am I being treated? How does this person show me um, that they care. And if they don't show me that they care, why am I interested in maintaining this relationship and bringing it all back to yourself rather than, you know, 
t you know, complaining to your friends. He never tells me that anything positive. He never like gives me comp pays me compliments. He always like makes these little underhanded comments that I know that are kind of like critical, but they're not you know blatant enough for me to really get mad about. And and instead of doing that, of really just saying, hmm, you know, that's that's very interesting that I'm observing this. Um, I wonder what attracts me to this person in the first place since I'm observing this behavior. Why do I feel compelled to continue to invest, you know, energy into this? What crosses you is the Queen of Swords, and this can be, um, you know, your swords, you know, so that this is kind of like the, the Queen represents water element or the intuition and the swords is the intellect and the air signs and um, it's funny so here we have the queen which can be the mother and the emperor can be the father um, and this is in the challenge position so I'm um, going back you know being playing Sigmund Freud on uh, on YouTube if you were if you grew up with a mother who perhaps was very critical of you and made you question yourself, that can, those tapes can continue to play even if you're an adult, even if you're middle aged and you feel like you should be over it by now. Oh, you would be surprised. It's a process sometimes and it can take years to fully, you know, understand the extent of it. Um, the other thing too is that the Queen of Swords can be in the challenge position can be this tendency to um, if you don't get your needs met to become bitchy and I'm, of course I'm talking to women especially but maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, that could apply to men I guess but the thing is that the Queen of Swords in the challenge position can be the negative um, expressions of women when they are not um, expressing anger in a mature way, when they're using cutting remarks, sarcasm, um, just insults to kind of like express their displeasure. Usually Libra is not um, like this because Libra tends to be a lot more civil and you know, gracious even in times where there is conflict. Um, Libra tends to be the peacemaker. But if you're a Libra and you ha you're close, you're, maybe your sun is close to Scorpio. You have the Moon in Scorpio, or you have Mercury in Scorpio, which is your communication style. It can be more cutting and uh, cruel. You know, um, but I, I think that even a Libra who has who has this position is going to still be much more kind-hearted than if uh, the sun is also in Scorpio, because Scorpio can be quite harsh, um, intense, but, you know, kind of like ruthless. So this is something that is probably not true for you the, this particular interpretation what's probably more likely is just that inability to decide what you want to do about the situation um, because you may feel like you're being treated unfairly that you're not being valued properly but you just hesitate to take action for whatever reason and I think a lot of it has to do with second-guessing yourself. What's coming in is represented by the five of uh, pentacles. This can also be the challenge card. I mean, um, the advice. And this is about lack consciousness. And this is kind of when you have to make these decisions. Um, oh, I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could remember things so thoroughly that I could just spit them out. But because I was just reading something about this and I can't my brain is jumbled I can't even think of what it was but it was basically saying that 
you know, when you really feel that sense of being divinely guided, you do things and it just, you're able to just do them and you have that real trust in the process that it's going to be okay. And how many people are like that? I don't think that that is very commonplace. I think that most people, I think it's much more common uh, for people to be apprehensive about making changes, especially major changes, and um, that they tend to be very um, fear-based that what if, if I quit my job, what if this other job that I'm quitting it for doesn't work out? You know, how can I guarantee that's going to work out and then I'll where will I be I'll be without a job I'll be without that job and my former job and I, I feel like self-actualized people people who are um, probably we could call them very successful in the material world which is part of that temperance card um, that they take a lot of chances but not foolish chances chances meaning that they don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but they do things that really, um, maybe their intuition is well honed, and they just really feel a strong pull to something, and they go for it. It's not doing something based on another person's expectations or dreams for the them. They're doing things based on what makes their heart sing. And so if something really inspires them, they may have this tendency to just go for it. And they always seem to land on their feet. They always seem to advance, get even more successful. And I look at these people, and you know, sometimes I don't know them personally. A lot of times, most of the times, they're just people I see online. But I know I'm inspired by them because I know that that is the way to live. But if you're not there yet, that's okay too. The question, the real um, advice is to question those thoughts and ask yourself where they come from. Like who told you that life is scary and that you have to just cling to the known quantity because you never know when it's going to go away. You know, there there are people who are doing that in order to um, keep us, you know, they might not have done it for a bad reason. There are people who just, that's what they believe about life, and they pass it on to their children. Um, and children absorb things at a deep level, and that's just how it is, so... Um, we can forgive those people who told us things that just simply weren't true and still be able to move ahead and see things differently, even if it's going to take time for you to get to that place. Even if you stay where you are, um, you can do that. The outcome, so I, these two cards came out, and the first one was... The Five of Cups, which is a card of mourning the loss of something. And this can simply be that you realize that something that maybe you thought was promising hasn't panned out. Now, one of the things they always note is that there are two cups still standing and the person has their back to them, which can suggest that the person is... Um, not seeing the silver lining, that they're being excessively... Um, you know, pessimistic or they're making too much out of the loss and they're not realizing that there still is something to be had. Um, this can be like if this is a personal relationship, it's knowing that it isn't what you thought it was. And it can be as simple as an illusion being shattered. Um, and being able to 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 feel that feeling of disappointment without letting it crush you, without, you know, saying, acknowledging it, you know, that's okay. Um, I see it now. I'm not in denial over it anymore. And if it's in the workplace of 
maybe there was some kind of um, promise that was somehow not kept. And perhaps you hadn't been waiting and hoping that you would be fairly compensated. And now you can, you know, it's bad enough that it hasn't turned out the way you have wanted. But on top of that, it's disappointing that um, they did that to you because you might have felt that you were strung along. So you might have felt manipulated. And that also is dis a disappointment in addition to not getting the financial compensation that you deserve because it feels like a, la a lack of respect or a betrayal of some sort. And so um, then I got an additional card, and I have the Ten of Wands, which suggests that you may, for the time being, carry on and work, this is a card of um, working very hard, uh, maybe you're working overtime, uh, perhaps this is what you've already been doing. And it's really, I think though that it's good because even if you decide to do it in the interim, it still could be that you have, now have plans in your head about an exit. And that way, you are going to eventually be, um, you know, making a change. Um, so the thing is, uh, you might resolve in your mind, well, you know what, I'm going to just keep going, and I'm going to kick some butt here, and I'm going to do it for six months, or I'm going to do it for nine months, whatever the thing is, if it's a, a certain season in the business that's particularly busy, maybe you stay there then, not only for your own sake, but because you don't want to leave them in the lurch, um, if they have a lot going on right now, a lot of orders, and then you make your exit when it's right for you, in your own time. And uh, so that can be very good. So anyway, um, I hope that that resonated, and uh, if you would like a personal reading, uh, please visit me at rainamoonastrology.com. The link to my online shop is below, and have a great April. Bye.